Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we are looking at the CR18P Evo as well as the FX118 platform. Really, it's the CR18P platform and the FX118 platform, not just the Evo, although we do have a specific part for the Evo. But we're going to be looking at some stuff from 3Flow9, guys. 3Flow9 always has awesome, innovative products, so we love to show off their stuff. Uh, all these guys here are 3D printed, uh, but it's very high quality 3D printing and strong uh, they use different different types of material depending on the type of products that they're producing but they do have multiple material types printer types all kinds of good stuff um, we have everything here for the cr18p uh, evo and fx 118 platform uh, basically anything for the portal axles that uh, are the hobby plus we've got everything we've got except uh, the low profile link riser and then the roller bearing steering link, which we can show you from another truck. And then um, there are some flow hub hubcaps as well as other accessories that are just general accessories. So definitely go to 3flow9rc.com, put a link down in the description. It's not an affiliate link, just check them out guys. Uh, help support small business and people that are doing awesome innovative things in our hobby space. Um, they like to focus pretty much on the minis, uh, the 118th and 124 scale stuff. So definitely support 3Flow. They're also local to me um, here in Colorado. Pretty awesome to hang out uh, and do comps and whatnot with them. So anyway, we're going to get into there and uh, show you what these little parts are for, what they do, and how awesome they look. First, we're gonna start with uh, this guy. So the first part that is specifically for the Evo Pro, specifically for this body, this awesome roll cage. They call it the flow cage, flow cage. Awesome little stickers here. I love their new logo. This is a newer-ish logo, freaking awesome. And this cage just kind of goes right there. I think this really kind of changes the look, makes this thing a little bit more aggressive and mean looking. Uh, also, it just gives you this little roll bar here. So when you roll upside down, you've got a little bit of curvature there that might help you roll back on top versus just staying on your lid. All right. I was curious if this guy could fit on here and not, not so much. It's really meant for this body specifically, but we thought we'd give it a look. I'm sure there's other bodies out there that this may work on. Uh, maybe like the cliffhanger. Uh, it might be a little too big for the cliffhanger. Either way, it looks sick on this. So we're going to throw this guy on here for sure. comes with the screws. You will have to put holes in your body, obviously. But uh, we're going to screw it up in through the bottom of the body so we don't see any exposed screws. And uh, yeah, it should look pretty good. Now on the website, they do show the screws coming in through the top down into the body. But I think we're going to screw it in through the body up into here, you can thread it into here. Uh, there are two different material types as well. There is an ASA version or a carbon nylon. Okay, uh, it's super lightweight, it's only eight grams. And um, yeah, so it's not really adding a lot of weight, but it adds a whole lot of awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, line this guy up and then we're gonna drill. We're gonna like take a small bit and uh, kind of basically mark where our screws need to go. A little fast, a little fast. Line this guy up and just drop our Dremel in. And ta-da, so now we have a pretty good general idea of where these holes need to go. We can use our body reamer or a Dremel larger bit and uh, make the holes a little bigger. All right, easy peasy. Went ahead and screwed some screws in here on all four spots. You can see them just barely poking out. And then we can just throw our little flow cage on there and we will screw it in. There we go screwed in there and I just screw them in until they're flush basically, which the screws are pretty much the exact length they need to be to be flush. So that's pretty sweet. And now we just need to get our, uh, our fronts in here. All 
bam, nice and flush. How sick is that? It makes it look so much cooler, so much more aggressive. Freaking love it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now we'll move on to the other items here. These two guys are the same. These are flow diff collars. They have a red and a black. And then there's also the rear, uh, the flow rear link riser. There's a high profile and a low profile. We've got the high profile. Basically just gives you a much higher mount for your anti-squat. Open this guy up, show you what it's about. So this guy goes right here on the rear of the axle, on your rear truss, basically giving you better uh, upper link mounting positions for your anti-squat, okay? And again, they offer this in two different sizes, a high profile and a low profile. And it comes with the M2 hardware uh, for mounting it on there as well as mounting your links. You don't have to do any cutting or modifying or anything like that, um, but if we're going to use this high profile and you want to go all the way to the top, we're probably going to need to um, relocate, relocate our ESC tray or trim it on the back here, just because we might end up hitting there. So I don't know if you can see in there. Right in there, we might end up uh, hitting a little bit. So if you want to get full compression, we're likely going to have to trim that out just a little bit. I also heard that there's supposed to be a 70, 75 aluminum version coming soon. So if you want the aluminum on the rear, you can do that. I do like the lightweight of the 3D prints though, um, but the aluminum is going to have a little bit better durability. And you can check out their website. They uh, talk about what anti-squat is. I'll go ahead and just read it to you here. So a high anti-dive value will help keep your front end down on steep climbs, transferring power to the tires and not the chassis, but also lifting the rear end slightly under hard acceleration, which will force the front end down. A lower anti-squat value will cause the front suspension to compress under braking and nosedive. Under acceleration, a low anti-squat geometry will also cause the front end to lift and the suspension to unload, which will also shift weight to the rear of the truck. That's really good for fast trucks on dirt, helps rock mounters keep the suspension extended during climbs, and for, you know, mud drag racing. Your chassis link and setup will determine your final values. Good measure is to find your values for your truck and even better just to test each configuration out. So a higher position on the links here will give you, is generally better for hardcore technical rock crawling and lower down on the link positions. Uh, they're better for like racing and rock bouncing, things like that, uh, where you're trying to kind of lift the front end just a little bit uh, to get better traction on the rear. Okay, so just quick, quick little explanation there. Again, that's on their website, you can read it. We're gonna go ahead and get this guy installed and see how much clearance we need to make. But before we dive in too deep and get this thing installed completely, we're gonna go over these diff collars because, well, they go in when this goes in because it's held by the same screw that's holding this on. So the, the flow diff collars come in two colors. We got red or black. And these are basically to help get rid of this sharp edge. There's like a super square edge on the axles on the CR18P pumpkin, basically, on the diff here, the diff housing. And so these are going to kind of put a nice little edge on there to help smooth this out, okay? So when you start to hit rocks, you're not getting caught right here. Um, this is kind of a big hang point for a lot of these trucks when you start to slide up into here. So these little collars are going to help make that transition a lot, lot smoother. Also, while these are 3D printed, there is supposed to be coming some Delrin ones. Now, while these ones are, are 3D printed, they're going to work great. They're super slick, but if you really want super slick, they said that there's going to be some Delrin ones on the way. And if you know what Delrin is, it's a machined plastic. You can't mold it. You have to machine it, um, but it is very, very slick. It's a very slick material. Now, I'm sure they're going to be a little bit more pricey than these guys, and I don't know if they're going to come in the different colors. We'll find out when they do come, and we'll let you know. Uh, but Delrin uh, collars will be very cool if you really want to go to the, the upper end of performance with the, the sliding and the durability and whatnot. Okay. But these things are going to be fantastic as well. Plus they, if you get the red, it just kind of adds a cool accent. So I'm going to throw the red on here and kind of show you what it's about. All right. I went in and pulled the wheels and tires off just so we can have a little bit better clearance here. And then uh, let's go ahead and get this guy out. I really kind of feel like I want to uh, paint these 
little disc caliper things silver. We've got brass in the front on this guy, but maybe we should do them both silver. <laughs> Okay. Looks like this guy still needs to unscrew. All right, so our links are now out. Get this screw out of here. There's a little bushing here in the middle, so you can pull that out. That's where our link riser is going to sit. Then this guy's just going to slide right in there. Looks like we might need a little bit. No, maybe not. I was thinking we might need a little bit of uh, shaving, but we are good. Fit perfect. Nice. Okay. And then our little flow diff collar here. It's just going to sit right on there like this. And look at that. Nice and smooth. That's freaking sweet. Use the included hardware here to put this back together. This will just go through all of it. There you go. Remember, don't over tighten. Just make it nice and snug. You are going into plastic. Right, so you don't need to over tighten, you don't need a thread lock or anything like that. Just get it nice and snug and the plastic will hold it. It's very rare that screws back out of plastic, um, usually back out of metal. So that's why we lock tight on metal, but there we go. Don't even need to use the nut on the other side. We are good to go. I'm kind of curious how, this is, this is pretty tall. It is definitely a tall link riser. And yeah, it looks like we're gonna, we're definitely gonna not be able to completely bottom out the truck with this tray here. So what I'm going to do, hmm, how much do we really want? It's barely, it's barely that, well, I guess once the links are on there, if you're mounted in the top position, you're definitely going to be hitting. So let's see. We can just trim this back a little bit here and we should have plenty of room. Okay, so it's really just these plug wires that are sitting there where that's gonna hit. So let me go ahead and get the links on there where we want them and we'll see how much we need to trim out. We're gonna go ahead and put this, put this guy all the way to the top, most extreme position. And then we can always tune it, right? You can always adjust it, move it, it's easy to move these. Um, and uh, just kind of see how you perform with different positions. Okay, so we're gonna mount these in the very top position here, but before we do that, we've gotta get our drive shaft back in. So let's make sure we get our drive shaft in. We're also gonna to wanna to make sure your drive shaft is in phase. So being in phase is kind of looking at these tabs here and making sure that they're the same on both ends of the drive shaft. So you can see right here, the tabs are on the sides, right? Versus like this or like this. So we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure this is the same way. And then on the drive shaft, oh, that's on the output shaft side, on the actual drive shaft, it's up and down, right? So we're gonna make sure we're up and down, not like this, but like this. And that should get us our drive shafts in phase, just like so. All right, so just like that, you can see that we're continuous from this ear to this ear. It's not going from here to the side. That helps just reduce vibration and binding and extreme articulation and whatnot. So once your drive shaft's in there, just be careful you don't rotate your axle because rotating your axle will cause your drive shaft to come out. And then let's go ahead and get this guy mounted up on our links. Like I said, we're gonna do the upmost and forwardmost position. That's gonna kind of rotate our output shaft up so that we're not dragging our output shaft. 
Remember, don't over tighten these. You're going into a 3D printed thing. It's plastic. So just get it nice and snug. You don't have to worry about it backing out. Usually screws don't back out of plastic very easily. It's usually the metal you have problems with. So you got to do metal onto metal. Uh, uh, use Loctite when you do metal onto metal. We're actually going to use the upper middle most position, I think, on this guy. Oh, you know what? I don't like how much our drive shaft's exposed there. So I'm going to actually move it just a little more. Uh, we'll move it to the one most forward. So we're going to go all the way forward. And that'll help rotate or clock our axle just a little bit. Here we go. And that'll get our output shaft angle a lot better. And there you go. You can see our output shaft angle on the pinion, much better. And we're using this hole right here, the forwardmost, topmost hole. It's kind of hard to see down in there. Sorry, guys. But yep, right in here. Okay, so we're all good now. It looks like the biggest issue here on the tray is actually where the screws are on here. They actually hit right up in here. So we're going to have to Dremel that out just a little bit, make some space. You can also just probably use an X-Acto and just kind of trim it out. So we'll just try right now. Let's see. Just kind of trim this guy out a little bit and make space. See that? Just take out a little material, try to make space for those screws. you almost have full compression. So you just gotta make a little bit of space and you'll be good. Okay, so you can see we've got a lot more clearance now in there. Didn't really have to take out much. Just a little bit for that screw and then we've got full compression on this side. You can see the left side is still still hitting, obviously, but the right side, we've got plenty of clearance in there now. So it really didn't take too much at all. And we'll just go ahead and do this side now. We should be golden. And bam, just like so. You can kind of see we trimmed it away, mostly around the links, right? Just basically dipped it in. And then underneath, we kind of tried to shave it in a way that was kind of angled. It's kind of hard to see in there, but now we're able to fully compress. We didn't have to do anything with our ESC or move anything around. We're fully compressing. Okay. I guess this side's got a little bit more to go, but not much. What are we hitting on? Oh yeah, just a little bit. But yeah, we can, we can take a whole bunch more out if we really wanted to, but I'm just trying to minimally do it. We're even able to put our uh, wires back here. Kind of drop them back in. They were they were tucked in here, and uh, there should be just enough clearance in there so that our wires could be tucked under the bed. Pretty slick. Okay, and don't forget these collars, these link risers, and we'll still we'll show you the roller bearing link. But the roller bearing links that are for this, uh, all that stuff will work on the FX 118, the brand new one that just came out. This guy, as well as the Fury Wagon as well as all the other CR18P trucks, not just the Evo Pro, but also the Evo and the other CR18s like the Rock Van and things of that nature. As long as they're a CR18P axle, you'll be able to throw this stuff up on there. Okay, pretty exciting. All right, we're gonna get this guy back together and get our front collar on. A few moments later. I went ahead and chromed it up. You can see him down in there. It just looks cooler. There you go. I dig it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be honest, these things, I just like the way they look when they're red. I think it looks freaking sweet. You've got this little extra kind of accent in there. Plus, like I said, it, you're going to get a lot of extra slick versus extra catch when you're hitting those rocks. So definitely going to be an improvement there. And then there's our rear again. Plenty of space in there. You can see we've got it set pretty high up there. So we have a lot of anti-squat. So that's going to definitely help our inclines. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, the roller bearing steering link that's available looks basically like this. If you haven't seen our uh, eight by eight with eight wheel steering and double motor, you need to check that video out. <laughs> but we've got roller bearing steering links on this guy and they basically have the exact same thing for the CR18P platform and the FX118. These things are pretty sweet. 
uh, especially when you combine it with the flow skid here. Um, I don't know if they're going to do flow skids for this, but that could be good if you got a little skid, same as this, and then you can roll right up into your roller bearing. Basically, when you're hitting rocks, it just kind of pushes you right into your skid, helps you lift up. You're not hitting a flat spot. You're not hitting on your steering link. Um, they definitely help. You know, obviously, when you're driving, you try to avoid any rocks that would hit on your diff, but sometimes you just can't avoid them, right? Like sometimes they're just there. And so being able to just kind of hit it and roll off of it, man, that's uh, such a benefit. So I see a lot of guys running these in their comp rigs and whatnot. Some of the highest end rigs are running this kind of stuff um, along with this skid here. Now this is that Delrin we were talking about, the flow skids for the, this is an SCX24 axle, but flow skids for the SCX24 have a Delrin plate. They're also available just as the diff cover. It's a brass diff cover. Um, it's a little bit lower profile, but yeah, it'd be cool to see those come out for the CR18P axles as well. But for now, we'll just do with the roller bearing link. We're going to have to get one when he gets some in stock. Definitely keep an eye out on the website for that stuff. Um, he's always making it. He's kind of a one man show. So definitely want to support the small businesses guys and be patient when they are out of stock. You know, guys like three flow nine, hard park, Maz designs, uh, mofo, all these different small companies that uh, are kind of one-man shows. You gotta be patient when they're out of stock, okay? Just let them know you support them and that you're waiting on the product and they'll get it out to you as soon as they can. All right, so there she is all complete. Definitely slick looking. I am a fan. And not only does it look better, but it's gonna help with our performance. And like I said, even this roll bar, well, it's mostly just an aesthetic thing. I really like the look of it. It sticks up a little bit higher. It's got a little bit more roundedness to it so that when you roll, there's the potential that you could actually roll over versus just sitting on this flat roof and uh, being stuck upside down. So there could be some performance benefit there, but even if there isn't, I like the way it looks. All right, guys, I hope you uh, learned something here. I hope you found a cool new product to throw on your CR18P or FX118. And uh, yeah. Please make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. All those things for channels you want to support. Get out there and support the small businesses as well. Let them know the Shop Mini RC sent you. We got links down in the description below. None of them are affiliate links. Um, they're just there for your convenience. Get out there, build something awesome, build a car, build a course, build a community, and then smash it, crush it, and bash it. But don't break the expensive parts, guys. Have fun. Oh, if you watched the whole video, why don't you put down in the comments below, go with the flow. And... Um, as 3Flow9 always says, happy crawling.